Hi everyone, welcome to a new session of Hanoth with Rockstar. This is a community space where we share with passionate Rockstars, like rock, uh, community, uh, members community of the Rock Wireless community, we, where we usually call them Rockstars. I get like a little bit confused right there, sorry. And basically this is a space where we talk about like their experiences, the cool projects they are working on and many other cool things. And for those who are watching the session for the first time, I am Maria Hernandez, Developer Relation Lead at RAC, and I will be moderating the session next to Jose Marcelino. Hi, our everyone, as architect. usual. <laughs> and yeah, for today's session, we marked our 20 session, which is 20? like a, a really oh good God. number. Yeah, 20. <laughs> and, and yeah, I'm super excited about today's ones because we will finally have a woman as a guest on the stage. And yeah, this is like pretty awesome. And we're going to be chatting with an embedded hardware engineer uh, with an entrepreneur soul focused on the developing or uh, on the develop on the development of IoT consumer products uh, from the hardware ledger to the software ledger. She is like currently involved with many projects uh, focused on cellular networks, technologies, as well as Laura and Laura One. And besides, she's a passionate dreamer and lover about open source community and the hardware culture. Welcome, Kiara. Thank you so Welcome. much for having me, Maria and Jose. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> nice to have you. Welcome. Here. Nice to have you here. We are super excited to, to be chatting with you today. And uh, yeah, having... no, thanks to, to accept the, for accepting the invitation. And uh, yeah, before I start like with our, with our chat, as every week, I would like to highlight that for those who are uh, watching this session during the live session, feel free to ask any question you may have on the comment section. And we'll be happy to address them on the Q&A session at the end of the session. So just to start to uh, like learn a little bit more about you, can you tell us a little bit more about your story? Where are you from? And how did you get to this world of, of hardware? Well, I guess that uh, everything has started when I was a little girl. Uh, I, I always say that I'm not, uh, that I'm a nerdy girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, a lot about, uh, getting to know um, knowledge um, about the things that, um, how, how everything works. But then I, I, um, I felt um, uh, really great in with working with computers when I was uh, a teenager. And then that's one of the reasons that I decided to um, start the journey in having more knowledge in computer systems and so on. So then when was the time when I needed to decide what were the engineering that I wanted to pursue at the university level. So I decided that uh, aside of having to know um, how the computer works, um, I wanted to, to go down uh, one layer um, below, which is uh, how is that the hardware interacts to make um, several things happening in the computer systems. So that's why I decided to um, to do an electronics and telecom telecommunication engineer engineering. And that's basically how my journey in the hard world world is start start off. Um, then I just um, uh, take my courses in electronics. I discovered uh, the diodes, the transistors, the amplifiers, then the transceiver, uh, then you you started to see uh, everything about how is that the electromagnetic um, ways um, works to send data over wireless uh, channels. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how I started. And I fell in love with my career. Then um, once I finished my, my engineering, I just uh, uh, wanted to keep going and learning uh, so much stuff about the hardware world and how is that uh, that hardware can allow us to to grab um, so many information about the world itself. I was mute. This is the, this is amazing. Actually, like one of the things that I love like about your website, your personal website, is the way how you how you talk about hardware, like. 
like it is pretty pretty awesome and and yeah you you anyone that can can reach to your site can know that you are super passionate about all the things that that you do uh, right now and all, through all your journey and where are you Thank based you. sorry yeah right now i'm currently living in argentina but okay. i'm from panama yeah I, nice. i burn in panama but currently i'm living in argentina awesome yeah and and which was like the first iot project like the first one that you work on well i guess that um <laughs> when i was at university i i had a, a blog where i was sharing my experiences working with electronics um i remember that i made a cube of three by three by three leds with an mm -hmm. arduino to show in several uh, um, mm -hmm. events that we have um, in the local open source community uh, over that time. Mm -hmm. So um, nice. I think that um, when we are talking about IoT projects, it's like kind of like a, have a sort of hardware where you have uh, a type of information that you want to collect or that you need to sort of processing and then um, send the data over um, a server uh, or a website, right? Uh, that's what I understand about what mm -hmm. IoT um, um, uh, uh, involves. So I don't really remember which was, which was actually the first IoT project that I made, mm -hmm. but certainly one of the first ones were about a project that I needed to use like a tipping bucket a sensor that can allow you to uh, measure the precipitation of the rainfall that falls mm -hmm. over a specific location. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have this sensor and I needed to um, get the information about the precipitation that um, it was uh, having in certain area. And mm -hmm. over that time, it was a time where um, the Raspberry Pi came Uh, the Beagle Bond uh, Black came. So you have those single board computers running a Linux new operating system uh, with access to um, several high programming languages where you can, for example, um, uh, create a web server and deploy a, a web page. And then you can um, show something into that web page. So in that regard, then I just create a system where you have the tipping bucket and, and then you grab the information coming from the tipping bucket, um, mm -hmm. going to the Beagle Bone Black. And then in the Beagle, in the Beagle Bone Black, then I have uh, some type of uh, scripts that will process the data and plot it into a web server running in Django, I, if I remember quite mm -hmm. well. That's basically mm -hmm. like my first <laughs> IoT project that I remember, um, because <laughs> over, over uh, before um, before that, I, I think I think that I was more uh, working with sensors with Ardu with Arduino, but not with any kind of um, connectivity uh, to the internet or using uh, like a sort of wireless um, communication transceiver. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, got it. Amazing. And like, in addition to like to being an engineer, we can say that you are like a really passionate entrepreneur as well. And yeah. so we can say that this led you to undertake like different initiatives, like on the community side, and as well to start working as a hardware consultant in this like high IoT ecosystem. So can you share more about like your career journey during this past mm -hmm. years, like how is to work like a hardware consultant? Uh, what kind of clients are you working with? And um, maybe what are the technologies that you mostly use in your current development? Yeah, I guess that um, working as a hardware consultant, it's quite different that you might expect when working in a, in a uh, uh, regular company, company, I would say. Um, because you need to be prepared, especially IoT, you need to be prepared for uh, trying, you need to get uh, prepared to read a lot. 
<laughs> I spent a lot of time, um, more yeah. than the usual hours, right? Yeah, to really time, time. trying to understand what is happening with all <laughs> these new technologies <laughs> that are in the in the surround, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so, right. um, yeah, it's it's something that you need to be prepared about. That uh, you need to know that you need to to be really dedicated in the time that you're going to invest to trying to grasp all the contents, all the concepts that are involved when trying to develop an IoT application. Um, so over the last couple of years, I have been working with different sort of clients uh, in, in several uh, type of use cases. Uh, so let's say, for example, I'm currently working in, in, in projects that are related more to asset tracking um, where you need to use uh, LoRa over LoRa One, and then you 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 have uh, Bluetooth as well that you can gather information coming from um, some specific hardware that um, has a Bluetooth, and then you might have like a, another board that contains or that integrates LoRa and LoRa One and um, another device, uh, um, another. Uh, a chip that contains as well um, Bluetooth that it scans those packets and then forward that information over uh, over the LoRaWAN server. Um, that's one example that of the projects that I have worked with. Uh, other type of projects uh, might be um, in the um, um, uh, power grid area where you have um, some kind of information that you need to collect, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you need to send the data over uh, the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, but it might happen that um, the information that you are trying to gather, uh, there is a, a huge distance between a device that has some internet connectivity, and then it might be appropriately used uh, LoRa as a technology be, uh, because it, it can allow you to have like a great coverage in terms of the distance right, to send the information. And then uh, you collect that information and send it over to the, to the LoRaWAN server. Um, that's one of the, 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 the type of projects uh, and uh, use cases that I have worked with uh, over the last couple of years. Okay. And, and which are and, the, uh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, and, and just to, to mention that um, I do really like, uh, everything that is related with wireless communication systems. So uh, I do have a preference to LoRa, I don't know, uh, but, um, uh, but most, uh, most of, of, of my, reg in my regular uh, basics, I use LoRa with Bluetooth and uh, those are the sort of technologies that I use uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to gravitate toward everything that is related to send packets over uh, a wireless channel. That's what I wanted to say. But at the end, like, for some reason, it's your, your like, favorite technology to work with, right? Like, yeah, everything that it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that, um, that the engineering that I choose, it's about electronics and telecommunications. Because you need to to have you need to to have a knowledge in electronics, uh, how to communicate with some specific sensor, and then um, and then the part of telecommunications means that okay you have uh, these sort of, of of sensors that are collecting data. So how do I get the data coming from those sensors in a wireless um, fashion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask why you prefer LoRa? Why is it the yeah. the long range? Is it easier to use? Why why, why do you say that? Well, I think I think that uh, LoRa it's um, it, it is a type of modulation that has opened up a lot of things in terms of of uh, physically obviously the distance. Uh, it's it's a great uh, uh, property that uh, the modulation offers. Um, and as well is because it's it's really low power, mm -hmm. so uh, that's really that's that's uh, uh, that's really neat. And then as well because over the, on the top of LoRa, then you're gonna have LoRa One, 
And then in Laura one, you're going to have this huge world wor <laughs> world of information about how you can uh, uh, design a system with a lot mm -hmm. of sensors and be able to send that information coming from those sensors uh, in a really clever way. And you have access to the standard to read uh, how is that the standard works. And in that way, you can learn about how to really uh, deploy that sort of, of systems in IoT. That's what, I think that that's one of the greats because uh, there is a lot of companies, there is a lot of people that are investing so much time in um, democratizing and spreading the world, the world uh, about how LoRaWAN works. Yep. And uh, it, it, you have a lot of communities as well. So I think that it's all the combo and the ecosystem that it is over uh, Laura that it really uh, keeps me excited about to know everything that has to be related with this type of technology. Amazing. Yeah, I understand and, that. And, and do you have like any particular like a preference for any like network server, like in the LoRa one side? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, I have a particular preference for ChurchStack, <laughs> which is a really oh, yeah. amazing, <laughs> good, which is a choice. really, uh, it's, it's really amazing because it's it's all open source. You can get into, into, you can put your eyes into the code and try to understand how is that the network server works. And then if you need to have some, if you need to do, to, to do some customization, mm -hmm. uh, you can do it. And even, uh, and um, on the top of that, if you think that uh, the feature that you are developing might be helpful for uh, other people that are using the network server, you can open a, uh, a pull request and um, the maintainer will, um, will decide in, in, with the community as well if that feature uh, can be really good so that you can implement. And that opens up um, uh, a, a really great path of experience when interchanging ideas with other di developers, which is pretty neat. But in overall, I guess that Tristat is a really good network server. It offers you a lot of great features when you are trying to deploy a LoRaWAN um, um, server, which is kind of great. Yeah. yeah. And ha did you did you already give it a try to to Helium, or what are your thought about it? No, actually, I haven't given it a try yet. I would be interesting, um, um, but um, being quite honest, I haven't I haven't tested yet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, right now, okay, you you are based like you are from Panama, but you are based right now in 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 Argentina. Argentina yes. Yeah. yeah. And but how is like Panama right now in the development like of new technologies? Like, are you currently developing projects for the local market or just for international clients? Yeah, I guess that uh, right now with all the the opportunities that the internet provides you, mm -hmm. right? You can have access to the uh, uh, you can have access to any sort of client in the world that might be interested yeah. in, in, in testing uh, LP1 technologies. Uh, but when I was in Panama, uh, definitely uh, there were uh, some efforts in trying to, um, to start um, developing applications in IoT because sadly in Panama, we don't have... Um, uh, uh, we, we don't have a lot of applica applications, deployments in terms of IoT in the country. But, uh, but definitely uh, when I was working in, in Panama and um, I, I, had, uh, um, I was in the um, university um, working for, um, for some projects that were um, uh, on, the, on my university, which is the uh, Universidad Tecnológica de Panamá. And we were using uh, LoRa to do some projects related to to yeah. IoT. So I hope that uh, uh, I hope that with um, with um, 
the efforts that they are uh, keep doing, uh, we can uh, reach to more people and the people wanted to uh, to um, uh, get to know more about how is that IoT and how we can leverage IoT in the different type of applications that we nice. that we can encounter in in Panama itself. Hmm. Yeah, Panama, Panama is a major shipping center, so isn't there tracking it's solutions a... there? Is it, no, is it no, surprising? no, that I that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's a big opportunity. Then you should, uh, yeah. you should think yeah, about it. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I would like to talk uh, uh, more about um, there is um, the group that I have worked with in the university. They are um, release a website uh, that I'm gonna mm. uh, share with you. Um, that will be available in the in the in the link in the description mm -hmm. of the video where um, they are trying to spread the, the word about Laura, how is that Laura one nice. and Laura works so that uh, we can have uh, more people engage in, um, into that sort of, of topics and, and trying to do some uh, applications with IoT, which is uh, the website is laura-panama.com and, and it's, a, it's a content that will be on Spanish. But Perfect. definitely, they are the, the, it's not like they, um, there is a huge community in IoT in Panama, but certainly there is uh, the, start, the starting of, of, um, of those sort of groups in Panama. Okay. And like this, this group that you mentioned is also like connected in some way with Panama High Tech or not? Yes, it's in some connected uh, way with Panama High Tech because um, the um, maintainer of Panama High Tech um, uh, had some relation with the university and the other other people working in that web page uh, are some professors uh, of the university Perfect. as well. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, yeah, you are like uh, like... You also contribute to different like open source community, and also you are like lover of the open source tools, uh, for like to use it for your projects, uh, mm -hmm. and also like you were Fedora, you were contributor to the Fedora project for many years, like in the past. Uh, can you like describe your experience, like contributing to to this project, and as well like what sort of contributions did you make to to this project over the years? Yeah, I guess that uh, Fedora is a really great operating system. I, I have used uh, uh, Linux new um, for about, I would say, like 10 years right now. Um, and the community of Fedora is really amazing. I um, uh, In Panama, they have a, a local community of Fedora where you can uh, just get together with the, with the people and they will try to help you in the early uh, be beginnings path, uh, if you want to start uh, using um, Fedora as the operating system. So that was the same for me. I just started off um, using Fedora um, um, uh, 10 years ago, and then I have the great opportunity to meet some amazing people that, um, um, that I was able to uh, to, to share ideas, to discuss ideas, uh, to ask to people if I don't know uh, something specific, they will they will be really um, happy to help me in that regard. And then uh, um, once I have um, grabs a little bit about how to move in the Fedora system, then I decided that I wanted to give it a try to promote the tools that Fedora has when trying to develop um, uh, hardware projects, uh, applications. So uh, over that time, when I was contributing in the project, I was, I was promoting, trying to give some um, talks about the software that it's in Fedora that you could use to create uh, uh, software um, applications that uh, has some sort of uh, hardware um, uh, concepts and how is that you can uh, 
program that sort of hardware. And then uh, that's one thing. The other thing that I worked with is a little bit in the in the um, uh, updates of the website, of the group of the web development in Fedora. Uh, I made some uh, contributions there. Um, other things that I that I made was, for example, in in Fedora you have uh, official repositories where you have um, packages that you can then, as a user, download those packages, right? But uh, those packages are um, given in an extension that it's um, common for Fedora, which are the RPM uh, packages. So there has to be some people in the community that takes um, one specific project and they um, follow in certain rules uh, of the operating system they um, take that pa that application and set it as a RPM so that you can just install from the official repositories without compiling the software and so on. So you can have a ready to go application to just start doing whatever you need to do. So I was being part of one of those people that were grabbing the, uh, the applications and con converted into the right format to be uploaded to uh, the official repositories of Fedora. But that's basically like one of, uh, one of the things that I made while mm -hmm. I was contributing in the project. But definitely the things that I liked the most were um, talking to really um, uh, people that were interested mm -hmm. in, in hardware. And, and I as I was a, an a student, a student over those years, I just really enjoyed uh, sharing true. the knowledge that I was uh, acquiring while trying to do the presentations to explain to the people what you, what can you do with that. Yeah, mm, definitely. But Fedora, the, so what happened with Fedora? There was a the support ended, right, from Red Hat. There was something okay. weird. Okay. Uh, can you? Can you so with you Fedora, what what happened with Fedora? Because the the Red Hat official support ended, right? I, or did I hear that wrong? Sorry, um, I didn't get your question. I mean, uh, Fedora is like the operating system that Red Hat have um, yep. for the community um, itself, right? The so free version, it, right? I wouldn't say like the free version. It is just like the operating oh. system for the community. Um, OK. Uh, and then um, if there is something, if I might be wrong, but I guess that it's, that it's in this way. Um, if uh, Red Hat uh, might use some packages that are in, in Fedora, uh, and then once they are uh, stable in Fedora, then they might be introduced those packages into the Red Hat operating system. Right. That's one of the things that. Uh, Fedora um, can do in that regard, but definitely um, Red Hat is it's the company that supports all the development in the um, upper, uh, Fedora operating system. But there, there is obviously um, a, a great um, a lot of people that are contributing back um, to all the things that are required to um, to promote Fedora as uh, and as an operating system. Um, okay. Yeah. And is it used in IoT a lot? Because um, you don't you you don't see it like running on the Raspberry Pi, for example. Is there do you think there's I a reason? I th I think that there was a version in Fedora for Raspberry Pi, but at quite being quite honest, I I haven't used I think that it was there was a version for Fedora Pi, at least on the early days when when we mm -hmm. have the the first uh, Raspberry Pi models. But I don't think that there is like an active. I might be wrong. I don't think that there is like an active projects uh, project uh, to mm -hmm. run Fedora on the operating uh, as an operating system on the Pi. Um, what I usually use when working with a Raspberry Pi is that I use the, the Raspbian operating system. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, that's uh, 
that's the the operating system that I use <laughs> on a single board computer. But <laughs> okay. But on the on the desktop side, then obviously I use Fedora for all the yeah. his, okay. history that I have with it with yes, the right, community. Okay, yeah. I was just oh, yeah. curious. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now, like jumping in, like into the development of Laura and Laura One, like projects, uh, you already mentioned that yeah, there is like a long path of of taking like so much time to to read and yeah. to be able to understand like many things that are, are happening around with the new technologies. But what suggestion would you give to those who wants to start developing IoT solutions on their LP One technologies, and also like I don't know, like something that you can share from your own experience, like from the beginning. Yeah, I would say that uh, it's really, it's really going to depend on what you really want to do because IoT has many, many, um, um, many areas, layers, right? layers, layers. Yeah. In Spanish, it's something like aristas. I would say, yeah, it's because there is so much going on when you are. <laughs> <laughs> when you are collecting from the time that you are collecting the sensor up to the point that you have that value on a, a server being plot uh, in a in a in a, in a, in a graphic, all right. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on between uh, when when the information goes to that um, uh, point. So I would say that um, that uh, right now it's it's really great because um, uh, I guess when I was just starting off with IoT, there wasn't so much documentation, and right now, thanks to all the uh, community efforts, right, you now have a, a, um, a sort of of great documentation online that you can take a closer look at. And if you have an idea, just try to look on internet if somebody else has done that um, mm -hmm. and try to um, replicate that project, let's say. And uh, once you uh, replicate that project, then try to add something in addition to that. Um, when you start to doing a project, uh, I'm 100% sure that you're going to learn something new. And um, it's when you are working with IoT, it's, it really is really going to depend whether if you wanted to focus on on the hardware side or if you wanted to focus on the software side. Um, yeah. So um, I think that what uh, somebody uh, might do at the very beginning is just trying to, to grab a project or trying to contribute to a project and um, trying to analyze why they did it in that way. Let's say, for example, in a hardware, uh, if you have a, a, a board that contains a microcontroller connected to several sensors with a transceiver, uh, trying to think about, okay, what were the decisions that, um, that make that this component were located in this side of the board and why not in another uh, uh, area of the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if, or maybe uh, trying to get in touch with the developers and ask that question so that uh, you can um, understand. You, you, you don't know, you don't know if, if the developers, I mean, it might happen that the developers can uh, reply you um, and it will give you some feedback about what you might uh, do it in that specific way. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I would say that, um, that uh, start with something and just trying to, 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 to keep going from there. Uh, and if you are stuck in some portion, just trying to, to get in touch with, with some people that you might know that... Um, have uh, made uh, something similar to that. Uh, I, I guess that that's something that I can recommend. Yeah. And, and what about like the tools that you are using like nowadays in, in your projects? 
like both in the hardware layer and the software layer. Like you mentioned that you love to to use a trip stack, for example, for the network yeah. server side. Uh, but about the boards and yeah, other applications that you use for visualization as well, maybe. Yeah, I guess that um, um, I would like to 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 reply that answered in terms of, for example, the equipment that you might require mm -hmm. when you are trying to develop from scratch a board, right? The PCB yeah. that mm -hmm. might contain a microcontroller, a transceiver, and a sensor and a power supply and a power, uh, uh, power regulator that grabs uh, the power from uh, a battery, right? Um, I think that uh, would be really neat if you want to start off just um, uh, have some power supply to power the devices that you are working with. Mm -hmm. um, it might happen that, for example, if you are using, um, if you are using, if you are starting to create a hardware that contains devices that drains a lot of current in a tiny amount of time, uh, you need to provide that current. And it might happen that maybe the battery that you're using cannot have that capacity. So okay. you might use a power supply, for example, uh, where you can regulate the uh, how much current you can provide to the device. If that device requires uh, that specific current so that the device can power up well, because it might happen that if you don't provide the, the current that the device requires, you're going to end that up with a microcontroller resetting all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. one point to have like a power supply. Other thing that I would recommend is to um, uh, to have like a, I don't know if, if I said it right, workbench mating. Uh, it's like a like a, um, something that you put in your in your workbench when you need to use um, when you have a board and then you need to take out some component of of the board. So you need to you need to use like a like a um, soldering machine, mm -hmm. but you need to as well have uh, like a cleaned um, space, uh, or maybe you need to 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 be careful with the um, um uh, I don't with the with with without the ESD okay yeah okay. the watch uh, watchman made it with ESD mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. that you cannot damage the devices that's one thing mm -hmm. that is really is really helpful and and it comes handy as well uh, because when you are desoldering the components you might end up with the circles of the of the um um, when you are taking out the component mm -hmm. and then it's going to be um, uh, cool when you clean up all, all those uh, uh, residuals that comes from taking out uh, the components. Um, other thing that I find quite interesting is uh, the use of, the, of a multimeter when you need to measure voltage. I guess that most of the time I measure voltage with the multimeter to verify that actually the voltage is reaching to the certain level that is required for the device to work properly. Uh, or you might mm -hmm. end up, I don't know, when trying to test continuity um, in the board, um, it might happen that you you um, might assemble uh, the, the board yourself, the components, right? And you are not uh, certainly sure about the connections of the traces between two components. So it might be handy to have a multimeter that can allow you to test the continuity, uh, the continuity between uh, uh, the two points uh, within the trace. Mm -hmm. Also, I would say as well that uh, the oscilloscope is really relevant um, because when you are trying to program a board that contains a microcontroller, let's say that um, you are going to establish a communication with the sensor, um, but you know that your code's supposed to be working, right? Mm -hmm. But you didn't get the expected result that you want. Okay, I'm sending this specific command over I2C, for example, for some particular sensor. And I know that the function that I'm using, it's okay, right? 
But when I see the value that returns me from um, sending the transaction over the protocol, right? I don't get the value. Yeah. So that's something that you cannot, if you, if you don't have an oscilloscope, you cannot, you, you won't be able to see what is happening on the hardware level. And it might happen that maybe some line of the protocol doesn't work as expected. Maybe the, the clock line is not um, using the right frequency, or it might be that the clock line is not really connected, right? So okay. you, could, you could have like a, a lot of knowledge coming off uh, using the oscilloscope when trying to debug um, code that's supposed to be working, but it's not. Uh, other thing that I think it's quite interesting to have on, uh, on your lab, it's a logic analyzer yeah. because depending on the type of oscilloscope that you have, there are some oscilloscopes that provides you like a decoding of the most common for uh, protocols, let's say mm -hmm. I2C or SPI. Mm -hmm. But then if you're using like a two channel oscilloscope, you won't be able to see at the same time the SPI lines, for example. I mean, you need yeah. to debug a LoRa transceiver, which uses an, an SPI communication between the microcontroller and the transceiver. Then um, it, it comes handy to have like a logic analyzer that you can put uh, on the traces of the SPI um, uh, bus, and then it start to see, uh, okay, once I send this transaction, uh, what what how is the protocol looks like and that's what brings you um that is that is what it brings you the logic analyzer thing you can then um uh trying to analyze and see if 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 the the waveforms that you're seeing are supposed to be the ones that you are expecting that's that's really great uh the can, logic can analyzer you, can you recommend the logic Analyzer, he, when you particularly recommend, because you can get the open source like the Pulse View type, or maybe the Sale, uh, the, more yeah. commercial one. Yeah. Do you have I any use, suggestion? Well, I I use the Sale. I, yeah. I I always confuse about how to pronounce the name. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it, Sale or something. Yes. Yeah, so. Sale, yeah. I yeah. use I use the Sales, and sometimes that's on the hardware level. But then on the on the software level, sometimes I use Sigrock, which is Sick like a, yeah, which is like a visualizer, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, use the uh, tools that uh, Celai provides you. They have a as well a a the decoders are amazing. They they have yeah, some excellent decoders. <laughs> Very yeah, amazing. yeah, and um, yeah, that's basically. Uh, the logic okay. analyzer that I that I can recommend in terms of okay. a, a specific brand, and then also I would think that uh, just to finalize and uh, some have some sort of of software different radio, I would say um, um, which one? Which one do you recommend the, again? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could use like a RT uh, RT SDR, right? Okay. So it, for LoRa uh, type of applications, the bandwidth is, is not too much. Uh, so you can you can use RT SDR, R, RTL SDR for that. And in that in that sense, you can inspect if your signal is really coming off the antenna, mm -hmm. uh, because it might happen that that um, that the transceiver, let's say, uh, sends you and interrupt telling you that actually the packet were sent off of the pin. But uh, and you're gonna have that waveform traveling from the pin up to the point when it reached the antenna, right? And it might happen that something goes wrong on that. <laughs> and, yeah. then, um, and then with having a, like a sort of software different radio um, equipment you could uh, sense um, if the packet is really coming off the antenna. Um, that's one of that's one of the, the the equipment that I can recommend in the in the hardware side, and then in the um, in the software side, uh, 
Um, again, when uh, we are um, trying to design a board, um, uh, I would say that uh, use uh, some sort of ADA system, uh, electronic design automation tool, mm -hmm. which can allow you to design the PCB. Uh, usually I use uh, KiCat or KiCat. Okay. Um, the open and then one. the, yeah, the open source <laughs> one, <laughs> uh, which is really great. Actually, I'm, I'm really looking forward for the next version, um, which is the six. Uh, I think that it's yeah. not uh, uh, the new. Yeah, it, it's there are so many great features that are coming in the version six of KiCat. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a one one point to be in mind. It's, it's uh, the KiCad contains uh, the soft the software that you will require to to use uh, to start creating the schematics and then uh, uh, start to laying out your traces in the board. And then the, uh, uh, on top of that, then um, like a Linux uh, <laughs> Linux new operating system. Story, <laughs> especially, <laughs> I guess. Some <laughs> Bora, <stuff>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Got I it. guess Got I it. mean you can use any any other type of flavor, yeah, right? Of the, the great mm -hmm. thing about Linux yeah. is that you have you have a lot of um, you can customize a lot in your system if if that is required, right? Mm -hmm. So and and yeah, and I'm talking about more about. Um, Delora, Delora one is tag. I, I use the, the Semtech, the stack, uh, the stack that provides Semtex when we are uh, working with the EndNote um, thing work. So um, yeah, that's, I think that that's what I wanted to say mm -hmm. about <laughs> the tools. I can keep going on and on and on. <laughs> okay. No, um, that, that is awesome. What super detail. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Jose. Which microcontroller do you prefer? Yeah. Do you have any preference mm -hmm. there? <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I started off when working with, okay, I started with the Arduinos that they were using, like the uh, ABR microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. oh, the Atmel. Uh, yeah. The Atmel, yeah. The ones. Uh, microcontrollers. Um, but but I didn't get into the level of of the um, low level, as for example, when you start to work with um, STM32 microcontrollers mm -hmm. or, or the um, uh, uh, Silicon Labs. Um, currently, uh, I guess that um, I kind of like the way that Nordic is. Um, is um, providing you all the ecosystem to work with their microcontrollers. I think that is really amazing, mm -hmm. the SDKs. Um, so I would say in that regard that I, I, I feel quite um, uh, um, like the Nordic uh, microcontrollers in that sense. Mm -hmm. That's convenient because yeah. that's what we offer now. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. Really I mean, the, the Nordic people are, are doing a really great job. Yeah. Yeah. They are. All the software, the stack that they are um, providing yeah. to the developers. Yeah. And do you have a whiz block already then? No, I don't have no. a whiz block. <laughs> We've got no. to, we have to I fix that. I have other, I have, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I have other devices from Rack. <laughs> he didn't accept it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, well, okay, okay. Well, uh, I, I do have other pro uh, other products from Rack that I work um, uh, when I'm developing Laura and Laura One applications. So, but but I don't have a waste blog yet. Yeah. Okay. okay. And which are the other projects uh, from Rack you have used on, on your projects? Yeah, I have used this one, uh, the Rack uh, 50, 50, oh, well. 50, 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this 50 one. 50 to 10, yeah. 50 to 10, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, for, for asset tracker. tracking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. for asset tracking. And it's really amazing. I mean, it's a, a really great job in, in the size that you work. <laughs> that you yeah. were uh, able to achieve it's so tiny 
Um, mm. And yeah, this, this, um, I use quite a lot this uh, board for asset tracking. So you have here the BG96 with the Nordic um, um, uh, 52840, which contains a lot of a lot of flash and a lot of RAM to develop yep. your products. And it's, it comes really handy when you need some sort of, of um, when you need some sort of uh, cellular connectivity. Um, mm -hmm. it, it features the BG96, um, which is quite great. I already uh, deployed some, some boards with the, um, uh, with the code that I program here. And they just work really amazing. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a, like a great experience. Yeah, uh, it's working got the with, with those boards. Yeah. yeah, and the sensors, really, the sensors are really the sensors are. Oh yeah, really it's got the sensor. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it has it yeah. has a um I think that it has a ambient light sensor. It has yep. a temperature temperature humidity sensor. The accelerometer, yeah, which is quite important if you need, for tracking. example, to detect movement, right, and trigger some event based on that movement. So right. it, um, it's really great. Uh, um, uh, and then okay. I have other, uh, and then I, I have the this one, which is the gateway that I use uh, mm -hmm. when I'm yeah, developing yeah, the you. Laura and Laura One applications. Mm -hmm. This is the, uh, the, yeah, 7243 uh, okay. Pilot Gateway Pro. Yeah. 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 Which is, which is, which uses the RAC 2245. 45. Yeah, 45, yeah. right. And then the, you can, you can put the Pi on there and then you have access to all the, the software available in Linux if you need to do some uh, something um, custom on the gateway side, but this is primarily the gateway that I use mm -hmm. in conjunction with uh, ShareStack to test the hardware that I'm um, that I create for um, Laura One applications. This is like the de facto. You, I mean, <laughs> you start to looking for solutions mm -hmm. about okay, uh, which type of gateway can I use for Laura One applications and Racks is coming on the top, and um, uh, I, I really like the documentation that Rack has. It's really amazing. Um, so th mm -hmm. those are like the type of projects, um, the type of products that I have used that I have used from Rack to work in the different type of IoT applications. Yeah, that I work. Mm -hmm. You, you you didn't have like the opportunity yet to test the whistle, but I would like to to know like your thought about its model its modularity, and yeah like how how you how do you think you can like implement this like in your day to day work maybe in the future? Well, I guess that uh, the waste block idea it's really neat, uh, especially if you if you need to prototype fast. Um, it's it's really great because you already have a lot of sensors that you can rely on and put uh, in a plug in a plug um, plug and play way the boards mm -hmm. and it can allow you to speed up a lot of the process when you are trying to to test uh, that your idea when actually you are trying to validate that your idea uh, works. Uh, that's that's really neat, and I definitely wanted to give it a try. Uh, I, I would say that probably uh, this year I would like to to find a project where I can start using the waste block. But uh, I think that the great idea of having the modular concept uh, it's is really great. It can allow you to 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 really speed up the process when you are validating a product. And do you have like any recommendation in terms of I don't know, let's say processing, core sensors, models, inputs and output models, something that you will add to it? Yeah, I think that uh, um, I, I was uh, checking the the um, models that you have, and I see that there is a, there's there's not um, 
a model that can provide you the new um, microcontroller that Nordic offers, which uh, is the NRF9160, which uh, contains uh, the LTE model all in one chip. Okay. I think that it would be would be a really great would be really great to have that uh, mm -hmm. type of 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 new chip integrated into your models. I know that the the the, the base cord of of the model is the NRF fifty two eight forty right. So, but it would be really great to have to have that that um, model from Nordic implemented into your um, boards. Okay. Yeah. Have you used it yes. in a project mm -hmm. already? Sorry? Have you used it before the 91, the NRF 91? No, no, no. That's that's it? why I want it. Yeah, that's that's oh, okay. why I you want, want to try it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I want to try it. Well, I think so, you'd be disappointed actually. Sorry to say, but it's not not good. Not good. The 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 91 is it's I think it's still it's the first product. I think the second one will be better. <laughs> that's just so oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, also, that's, you don't that's have good the 2G. Yeah. Also, you don't have 2G, okay. so I don't know. Like, I don't know if you need the the 2G fallback or not. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah. 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 When I was working with the asset tracker, um, um, we were uh, primarily using Naroban IoT. So. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a good point to bear in mind. That some sometimes if uh, if you are developing an application that is going to be uh, placed into a country that doesn't support uh, yeah. narrowband yeah. IoT, yeah, that's really important to bear in mind that yeah. you need to have some sort of fallback if that doesn't yeah. work. Definitely. Right. But thank you yeah. for the recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, well, I think like we are uh, jumping like for for our our session. Um, yeah. I have like a, I still like some question pending over here, but I would like to <laughs> to jump uh, on the people who is connected. If someone of you have any question, feel free to address them on the comment section, and Kiara will be super happy to uh, answer them. Uh, for now, I will. I will add another question on my side, or maybe Jose. I don't know if you want to add a special question for Chiara. Um, you go ahead first, Maria. <laughs> Let me figure <laughs> that out. No, uh, perfect. No problem. Like uh, you mentioned that you were like too much with like uh, asset tracking, but I'm wondering if you if you had like experience with other kind of of sensors. Let's say. Uh, temperature and like cold chains applications or applications in the manufacturing side area, more in the industrial robots. I don't know if if you have worked some some time with with it. No, no, no. Uh, I I I wouldn't say uh, that I have worked with that. So okay. in the cold chain, I guess no, definitely not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Mm. Very good to know. And there is like any particular blog or any book uh, or, or any courses that you can recommend to anyone who wants to get started? Yeah, I think that uh, there is a lot of books mm -hmm. that I can books. recommend. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but because I think that uh, um, you need to have like uh, both the theoretical things and mm. then apply those concepts into the reality when trying to make a real um, real mm. hardware product, right? So it's, it's, it's really convenient for you to try to have like a background about how is that Delta stuff works. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, as I said, it's really hard <laughs> to grasp uh, the concepts, but uh, definitely in, uh, if I have to recommend some books, uh, for people that wanted to start off in in uh, try with electronics and uh, hardware um, uh, as a field, uh, there is a book that I uh, that I um, that I recommend about electronics. It's all electronics itself that can provide you um, concepts about transistors, diodes, um, uh, configurations of amplifiers. Um, which is electronics from uh, by Alan Hambly. 
I I use it when I was in uni at, at the university, and I and I'm still use it when I need to consult uh, some stuff, and it's really great. It's more related about electronics, and not so much about the digital side of uh, of electronics, but more about um, mm -hmm. electronics as transistors and um, um, uh, amplifiers and and so on. Uh, the other, the other tool that, uh, sorry, the other book that I find uh, really quite interesting, it is the the one um, called Hand On, Hands On, RTOS with microcontrollers uh, by um, Brian Brian Amos, I guess, um, which can uh, give you like an introduction about how you can start your pro your uh, projects when working with real-time operating systems. Um, he uses FreeRTOS as the uh, real-time operating system, but it can the concepts that uh, he, chair, uh, he shares can be applied to any uh, other uh, real-time operating system. And I found quite useful because when you're working with IoT applications, you need to have several tasks, uh, kind of like a running, you know, uh, at, mm -hmm. at the same time, mm -hmm. and then yeah. you need to like like to have a, like a kind of a structure that um, can allow you to to uh, uh, design that. And having a background about how real time operating system works is is really great. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's basically the books that I can mention because I know that we are running out of time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, can, can you tell me something about the uh, Laura one in Latin America in Argentina? How how is that progressing? Do you, is there a big community there? Or no? Not yeah, yet. no, not not that I'm aware of. Uh, sadly, mm. uh, I think that that's something that uh, uh, we should definitely improve um, <laughs> as compared to other um, um, countries or uh, continents, uh, Europe, yeah. for example. I know that there's a lot of uh, a lot of people working in IoT applications, um, but uh, I sadly I I I cannot mention like a lot of news about that. Mm -hmm. um, do you think yeah. it's because of the cost of the hardware, like the um, customs duties, that kind of thing? It might be one reason, but the other thing is that maybe, um, uh, I don't know, maybe there is not so much uh, people interested in IoT applications <laughs> in this area. Oh, really? oh wow, okay. okay. But there, there is like no, a but... group of people, like I know that, for example, in the Helium community, uh, there is a channel for like a Spanish, um, Hispanic people, and there is a group ah, of people know. from Argentina that are like waiting, um, that are eager waiting for for the hotspot to to start like deploying and working with with the technology right there. I will put you in contact with them. Definitely, you can catch up and yeah, discuss about yeah. some projects around there. Yeah, that would be really great. Sadly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as I said, uh, most of the time when when I'm working with the with the, with the projects, um, <laughs> those projects are not from clients not from uh, yeah. Argentina. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, nice. I think like we we don't have like any question on the on the comment section, so we can like just jump to to the end of of the call. Kiara, like thank you so much for for thank taking you. the time and sharing like all these things with us like and all the things that you have done so far i know that we can stay here for a while and keep chatting <laughs> yeah <laughs> for one hour more <laughs> definitely uh, but yeah all the things that that you shared today will be of great help for for our raxer thanks for your book recommendation as well you mentioned it before the call that you wanted to you you wanted to share like a list uh, with yeah. the links to the book, so feel free to share it with me, and I will place it on the video description. So anyone, sure. anyone who is watching this video later can refer to it. And yeah, just just take a look of all your your recommendations. Thank you so much yeah. for for being here. Thank no, you. thank you, uh, thank you so much, uh, guys, for uh, 
having me. It's a, it's, it's, it has been a really great pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you, Rag Wireless, for having me. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. Now, now, and also thanks for the whisper that we're going to be sending to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Exactly. Thank you, Rag. <laughs> Nice, nice. Yeah, just, just tell us what yeah, you well, think about it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. Thank you thank so much you. as well to the, to the people that were uh, watching. Definitely. Um, until the next time, then. <laughs> yeah, thanks for all of those who, who stayed during the entire session, for all of those who connect. And yeah, uh, if someone is watching this video later, feel free to leave your comments on the your question in the comment section and we can ask them later. Jose, something that you want to add before I leave? No, that's all. Thank you. Thank you that's again, Kiara, for yep. Thank, thank you for you, being Jose. here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.